Well, which now is the United States Ambassador <laughs> to the Court of St. James. He is, uh, uh, of course, the American Ambassador here, Matthew Bars, and welcome to you. Uh, First Lady, we know, has a long-standing interest in education and girls' education, but mm. clearly this decision to go to Tower Hamlets, to majority Muslim school, was a pointed one. It was, I mean, I think the report just there showed how powerful it was for those girls, and you could hear how it meant to them. It was very powerful for the First Lady herself, and you could see her reacting. So the energy in that room certainly flowed in both directions. Um, and look, I mean, she could have picked, there are lots of other wonderful schools sure. around but London, around the UK. she chose to go to Muslim one where most of the girls wear headscarves. Well, sure, and I think she explained, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, a reason for that. But I think the point that she was trying to make uh, in the address is one that applies to all girls in the United Kingdom and back home in the United States, which is they're all doing well, they're excelling, they're studying hard, and she's urging them to um, keep doing that but also to connect with other girls around the world, especially the 62 million, think about that, almost the population of the UK, 62 million girls who do not go to school. That was the focus. As an American, are you surprised by the radicalization within the British Muslim community? It's something we struggle with in the United States, the UK is struggling with, other countries uh, in Europe are struggling with, and we need to uh, and we are working together to figure out ways to deal with it. And it's not, um, there's no one simple answer, but what I think you saw today with the First Lady is certainly a part of it. Uh, and she asked them to join. You know, she's saying, let girls learn, join in the effort to reach back to the communities where you may have come from or other places you may never have been to reach those girls. Um, and encourage them and do your part because but, but, but that in a sense it, it is a clash of values isn't it because you know we know in Pakistan that just for going to school Malala was you know someone tried to murder her and, and, and other people have been murdered and, and there is clearly divergent values well and it's something um, in the case of Malala it's something that the First Lady mentioned in her yeah. remarks that weren't part of that report the other thing the First Lady went on to say is applauding the UK for its leadership around the world and think about what DFID and other organizations are doing in Pakistan to pick that particular place, not limited to Pakistan, other places in sub-Saharan Africa, doing the hard work to remove those barriers uh, for these girls to get them into school. Because uh, if you can remove those barriers, all the research shows that it improves the economy, it improves public health, it improves security. Oh, and by the way, it's the right thing to do. Is that what the UK is there for, if you like, the soft power, doing, doing the right thing, representing values rather than as a military ally, for example? We've had some, both and. Some, some criticism of uh, Britain's failure no, to honour its NATO and. commitment in Europe. The UK is leading around the world with all the tools that it has, just like the United States is leading around the world with all the tools it has. Look how the UK and the US stood up together to deal with the Ebola threat in West Africa. Far from both our shores, but um, living up to the values that we share. Um, so that's a good example. We're doing uh, more you know, military things together um, but, in I Iraq mean, and doing things like today to address yeah. girls' education, especially adolescent girls' education. And those things, of course, connect to security, prosperity. So if we take, amidst all the warm remarks, some of the warnings we've had from the President down about Britain's military spending, about Britain's relationship with Europe, is America worried that Britain is a country in decline as a global power? UK is a global power. You see it every single day around the world. Uh, we have no closer partner than the UK. Um, for the, you know, look at what we're doing together, as I mentioned, with ISIL, yeah. uh, trying to defeat it, not just the yeah. military angle, stop the flow yeah, of foreign fighters. But, but, but you, you know that, you know, there's more criticism in this country of the recent military involvements in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, there is, as I say, this declining military expenditure below the levels that are recommended. And there is a lot of comment, one can read it, uh, from politicians and indeed from... Well, sure. American Look, I mean, on the 2%, we've yeah. always said it. The fact is, Britain is uh, one of the only, I think, only four countries, including the United States, mm. UK, Estonia yeah. and Greece, I think, who hit the 2% target now. Uh, we think that's really important. Uh, and we think lots of other things are important, too. I mean, the other thing... Uh, Including things like the work that yeah. DFID is doing around the world, our equivalent of DFID is USAID, um, uh, the Peace Corps on our side. How can we use all the tools we have uh, and do it in an yeah. effective way? Well, the other thing that struck me was it's uh, 800th anniversary celebration of Magna Carta, 
and Americans seem almost to care about it more than more than we do. I mean, after all, you built the uh, the monument uh, and uh, uh, put the monument to uh, John F. Kennedy there. As we well. have a huge debt. Uh, to Magna Carta. We are inspired by it in our history. Uh, you know, we brought it over the first settlers and then we um, yeah. were inspired by it when we declared our independence mm. from this country. Um, and then we've used it. I think the important thing to focus on, you saw that at the, on Monday uh, with the Runnymede celebrations when our Attorney General Loretta Lynch came over expressly for that. So the highest law enforcement mm. officer in the land coming to the UK to mm. um, thank uh, the UK for the inheritance of the Magna Carta and the fact is yes the history is really interesting but you know what this is working right now today as we try to to pick one example fight corruption around the world so the rule of law and the relevance of the rule of law is absolutely relevant today you see that uh, with the US and the UK shoulder to shoulder to pick one example um, sticking up to help the people of Ukraine and to impose cost consequences on uh, cost and consequences on Russia for their aggression and violation of territorial integrity. Well, well I mean you mentioned Eastern Europe uh, would the UK still be as relevant if it votes to come out of the European Union? Well, our position on this one has been clear which is it's entirely up to the Brits on how they deal with their but. relationship with and within Europe. No but, full well, stop. Surprise, no, and no. hey look if you ask us of course it's up to you and of course we care. Why yeah. wouldn't we care? We value our strong partnership yeah. with the but UK. You'd like, you'd like to stay well, in. The UK makes every organization it's a part of stronger. We know that from ones where we sit literally next to each other because of an accident of alphabet, United States, United Kingdom. Mm. But we stand next to each other, not by accident, because we share these same values. UN Security Council, NATO, OSCE, OECD, mm. all these organizations benefit from UK's global outlook uh, and their global commitment. And that's what you saw today, yeah. and that's what the First Lady was and that highlighting. And the EU as well. He, America can't obviously. So we do. We well. value a strong UK and a strong uh, EU. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Adam.